Texas Tech is coming to Austin to kick off conference play. Let's scout the Red Raiders as they continue to evolve from their air raid Mike Leach days. Which players do we want to watch out for? How will they try to attack on both offense and defense? Can Matt Wells turn it around in year three? As always, don't forget to pick up your new hat for the new season at Last Stand Hats. Use promo code TEXASHOMER, all caps, for 10% off your purchase at laststandhats.com. Texas Tech is trying to forge a new identity, one focused more on running the ball and fielding stout defenses. Let's see what's coming our way this Saturday at DKR. Without further ado, let's get into it. There's real stakes for Tech this season. Matt Wells is walking the tightrope and a losing season could result in dismissal, a far cry from the success Wells was able to generate at Utah State. It started back in the early 90s when Wells played quarterback for Utah State. He bumped around as a QB coach before getting the opportunity to be the quarterback's coach for his alma mater. He was promoted to offensive coordinator the following year. In his first year as offensive coordinator, Utah State went 11-2, winning the 2012 Western Athletic Conference Championship. Utah State's head coach left to be the head coach over at Wisconsin, leaving the job open for Matt Wells. Wells and Utah State went 9-5 and and then 10-4, and aided by their top 10 defenses. For a coach with an offensive background, much of Wells' success has actually come from his defenses. Wells then went on to have three losing seasons before making quite the turnaround. In 2018, Utah State had the third best offense in college football with the 38th ranked defense. Utah State went 10-2, and ranking as high as 13th in the nation. Wells set offensive school records for touchdowns, points scored, total yards, and more. On the defensive side, Utah State led the nation in turnovers gained, passes intercepted, and three and outs forced. Meanwhile, Cliff Kingsbury heads to USC from Texas Tech. In late November 2018, Wells was hired by Texas Tech to become their head football coach. Year one, Texas Tech only had four wins before COVID hit in Wells' second year. Texas Tech went on to only win four games in 2020 as well. With a sputtering offense and the Mike Leach air raid mystique wearing off, Wells had to make a move. Tech has had bad offenses the past two years. They averaged under 30 points per game in both years, regressing in their second year. Wells has to find someone to put up points, or it's likely the end of the road for the Wells administration. Wells hired former Texas Tech quarterback and longtime TCU offensive coordinator, Sonny Cumbie. And frankly, it's a risky move for Sonny Cumbie as well, with only really a year to prove that they can field a competent offense. But it's a solid move in that Cumbie is very knowledgeable in the Big 12 and won't have any learning curve on what works best offensively in this conference. Gary Patterson originally hired Cumby to install the air raid offense at TCU, and in his first two seasons, TCU had top three offenses nationally. But like many air raid guys, not adapting allowed defenses to catch up, and TCU has struggled offensively for the past few years. Cumby was looking to be the only cook in the kitchen when it came to the offense. Gary Patterson often uses multiple co-offensive coordinators in conjunction with one another at TCU. Cumby wanted to spread his wings and coordinate an offense under his own power, and Wells brought him back to Lubbock. But that's not the only new addition on offense. Oregon transfer quarterback Tyler Shuck is an intriguing prospect for NFL scouts. He's six foot five, 225 pounds with good mobility and a big arm. There's been a lot of whispers from the quarterback community about what Shuck could become if he continues his development. There's no doubt that he has NFL measurables at the position, but in his junior year, he has to improve his decision making. Shuck started seven games for Oregon last year and threw for 13 touchdowns and six interceptions. That's not an ideal ratio. In his first three games at Tech, Shuck is completing 66% of his passes with six touchdowns and two interceptions. And with adjusted completion percentage, Shuck is at 80% for second best in the Big 12. Shuck had a poor outing against FCS Stephen F. Austin in which his stats took a dip and he threw two picks. But in the other two games, Shuck performed well. Tech played a light non-conference schedule, so I'm interested to watch Shuck's progression against better defenses. I have to admit, I'm keeping an eye on him too because those measurables are worth the scout. And don't be fooled by the size. Shuck can move. He's an effective runner that can find the end zone easily on zone reads. And if he pulls the ball, he can pick up a quick 15 yards. It's not in the style of Levi Lewis or KJ Jefferson, but don't doubt his ability to scramble for yards if necessary. With a new promising quarterback to lead his new offense, Sonny Cumbie needs to reestablish his prowess as a play caller and offensive architect, demonstrating he can adapt and grow his offense. Though Cumbie is a former air raid tech quarterback, he does show preference for the run. TCU led the conference in rushing yards per game last year under Cumbie. This isn't the throw every down Texas Tech many are used to. You'll get a steady stream of run plays from various backs because Cumbie believes in the running back by committee approach. And this strategy should work due to having many quality backs on campus. 
So Roderick Thompson was Tech's leading rusher last year, but he had a shoulder injury and he is just now getting back in games. He's been rehabbing since April and will likely need some time readjusting to the speed of play. But it hasn't been an issue since Tech has two more running backs putting in work. The leading rusher so far this season, Taj Brooks, is a stocky, powerful runner with impressive speed. If he goes untouched through the line, he can come out the other end at full speed and he's hard to track down. He's built like a power back, but he's a legitimate home run threat. He's averaging an impressive 8.2 yards per attempt, currently the best in the Big 12. He's commonly used in zone blocking schemes and has the second highest percentage of breakaway runs, meaning runs of 15 plus yards at 58%. Tech hasn't been playing world beaters in non-conference, but these are still very impressive results from Taj. But that's not the end of the running back platoon. Xavier White is a speedy converted wide receiver averaging 7.1 yards per attempt this season, while being a threat in the return game as well. Xavier isn't a traditional running back, and Tech leverages his wide receiver's ability from the backfield. He's still adjusting in some little ways like lowering his pad level, but he's a dynamic athlete that Tech loves to utilize for red zone strikes. Like I said, this ain't your grandma's Texas Tech. This team places heavy emphasis on the run, unlike their previous coaches. Our run defense was incredibly suspect against Arkansas, allowing hundreds of yards of rushing. I'd imagine Cumbie would focus even more on his running backs, knowing it could be a weakness for Texas. But Tech also has some ability in the pass game like we're used to. Tech lost their number one receiver in TJ Vasher to the NFL. But don't worry, there's a new number one receiver on campus. Tech prints wide receivers. Eric Ezukama is a fourth-year All-Big 12 receiver with NFL ability. He's 6'3", 220 pounds with good speed and power for yards after the catch. He put up 179 yards in Game 1 versus Houston and 143 yards against Stephen F. Austin. Ezukama is a quintessential number one receiver that you can utilize anytime you're in a jam. You can put him behind the line of scrimmage or deep downfield, and you'll see Tech use him all over the field. He's a major focus for the offense and must be kept track of, or you'll find him in the end zone. They force feed Ezukama, and it will be a major test for our corners and safeties. He lines up out wide about 80% of the time, but they do put him in the slot to hunt matchups as well. Ezukama is an excellent receiver that will cause us problems if Shuck continues his accuracy trend. Keep an eye out anytime number 13 is on the field. Tech lost a talented slot receiver in Keyshawn Carter to Houston this offseason, but Matt Wells dipped back into the portal and picked up another receiver in Troy transfer Kalen Geiger. While at Troy, Geiger had over 1,600 yards receiving on 189 targets in just two years, and he's lined up out wide at X receiver. He's undersized at 5'10 and 185 pounds for a wideout, but he's shifty with good separation. He's not looking to go one-on-one for jump balls. He's looking to leave the corner in the dust so he can make a catch with no one around. But as Texas fans know, having skilled players doesn't mean much when the offensive line is struggling. The mind of the offensive line is at the center position, and Tech is in good shape there with four-year starter Dawson Deaton. Deaton gave up three sacks his freshman year in 2018 playing left tackle. Since moving to center his sophomore year, he hasn't allowed a single sack. He's been effective in run blocking and pass blocking. He's a solid centerpiece for their line, but the rest of the line hasn't been as skilled. Luckily, Wells scored transfer TCU left tackle TJ Stormont in the offseason when Cumbie signed on. Stormont was the second-ranked pass-blocking tackle in the Big 12 last year. Stormont is a great addition to a line struggling to fill spots with starting caliber players. A good pass-blocking left tackle also makes life far easier for Tyler Shuck, allowing him some time to work on passing downs. Plus, you already know Stormont is Big 12 ready and familiar with opposing defenders. Behind Deaton and Stormont, Tech is looking to improve offensive line play and therefore boost their struggling offense over the past couple years. And another boost in the blocking game actually comes from their tight end, Travis Kuntz, graded as the number one pass blocking tight end in the Big 12. Ranking seventh in run blocking, Kuntz's blocking ability, paired with his 100% reception percentage, has him as the number one overall tight end in the conference. Kuntz is an important part of this offense in both protection and receiving. So on offense, Tech has an intriguing quarterback, three solid running backs, a top receiver, a top performing tight end, a senior center, and a top left tackle. On paper, this team has some weapons, but can they combine them efficiently enough in time to save Wells' job? That's what's yet to be seen. Defensively, we're going to have our hands full in the run game. Several Arkansas backs posted stats on this defensive line, and Tech employs a similar rotating strategy. This isn't the air raid tech of old, and our defensive line has to get push, tackles for loss, and sacks to keep Shuck behind the chains. 
Chuck can make less than optimal decisions when pressured to make a chain moving throw. Definitely want to focus on the run, but you can't always load the box because they still have an excellent receiver in Eric Azukama. Lose track of him and it's six points. Since he plays out wide, our corners will be tasked with tailing him. I imagine he'll still put up yards. It's more about limiting his effects than shutting him down. Tech's offense is still trying to find itself with a solid cast of skill players. This offense goes as far as Tyler Shuck's potential takes them. If he can stay composed and avoid the risky play, Shuck can make some passes that will even impress rival fans. If he gets loose with the ball, then you'll see Tech struggle. But Tech can also lean on a solid group of running backs, each with their own strengths. If Texas continues to be poor in stopping the run, you could see another group of backs tear us up. Our linebackers will have to remain disciplined and make good tackles to limit their success. And Tech is doing a good job to stay ahead of the chains and move their offense forward, at least statistically. Now we wait to see if that success continues into the conference against better competition. And now let's hop over to the defensive side of the ball to see what to watch out for. The defense has been a pleasant surprise for Tech. I'm bullish on their defense with an excellent group of linebackers and an alert secondary. They're posting good numbers with opposing offenses only running successful plays against them 32.31% of the time, only second to Iowa State. They have had success in run defense and coverage early in the season, so they aren't unbalanced in their ability to defend the run or the pass. Texas Tech has been able to stop opposing running backs behind the line on 25% of runs for second in the Big 12. Their defensive front seven causes havoc on 16.15% of plays. Havoc plays are sacks, deflections, tackles for loss, etc. And Tech boasts the top run defense in the conference currently as well. While doing well, oddly Tech's defensive line is their biggest question mark on that side of the ball. Defensive tackle Devin Drew is the best run stopper on the line, but second string nose Tony Bradford Jr. is top 10 in the conference as well. Tech's starting nose Jalen Hutchins has room to improve run stopping thus far. The defensive ends can also show improvement in the run game, but Tech's biggest defensive weakness appears to be a lack of pass rush. Tyree Wilson is their best pass rusher with two quarterback hits and eight hurries. And where knows Jalen Hudson's lacks in run stopping, he makes up for it on passing downs with two sacks, one quarterback hit, and two hurries. But ultimately, Tech is missing a top pass rusher in the league with little depth. Tech is good at slowing offenses against the run, but they can lack the pass rush to punish opposing offenses once they get behind the chains. So, if the defensive line still needs to show improvement, how are they good with run defense? And that's because the strength of their team lies with their linebackers. They have tremendous depth at the position. Four Texas Tech linebackers are ranked in the top 10 for the Big 12, with five in the top 15. Colin Schooler, brother of our Brendan Schooler, Rico Jeffers, Josiah Pierre, Kryshawn Merriweather, and Brandon Boyer Randall are all performing at a high level. And Rico Jeffers and Josiah Pierre aren't even starters, so they have starter-level quality going into their second string. And they help the defensive line tremendously in the run game and the pass rush while constantly looping around and trying to confuse the opposing offensive line. The best pass rusher on the team is actually a linebacker in Brandon Boyer Randall. This is an experienced group that is aware and aggressive. Texas struggled mightily against a tough linebacking core at Arkansas. This is another skilled, aggressive group coming to test a weakness we have put on tape. Tech linebackers will show us if this offensive line has made progress picking up blitzers. Texas Tech's linebackers against our run game is the matchup I'm most interested in this week. And usually good run defenses lack a little bit in the secondary, but Texas Tech is doing well in coverage. In fact, best in the conference once again. Cornerback Adrian Fry is the top corner in the league statistically with fellow corner Demarcus Fields at number three. On the other side, cornerback Rashad Williams is a seventh ranked corner. Once again, Tech has corners performing well into the second string and they have multiple 6-3 corners they can trot out to limit large opposing wide receivers. Eric Monroe is the top safety. He's a sure tackler in the run game while only allowing 12 yards in the pass game with an interception under his belt. Nickel Reggie Pearson Jr. does excellent in the run game, but he does need to improve his coverage ability. And Marquise Waters rounds out the final safety spot, ranking 19th in the Big 12. Frankly, this is a good defense with quality depth. Against our Texas offense, there's a couple areas for concern. Our run game was easily stifled in Fayetteville, and Texas Tech's current strength is their run defense. If they shut down the run, then we try to pass. But Tech has a solid secondary as well. Our receivers have struggled to dominate at the line of scrimmage, and Tech has a deep group of corners with some size. 
And if we do get open downfield, Texas has been struggling immensely to hit the deep ball, making it hard to have explosive plays. But as mentioned, Tech hasn't faced anyone of note as of yet, so the true test will come Saturday. But they certainly grabbed my attention as I did my research. Their strengths are in the areas we're struggling in, so they pose a threat. They are good at stopping early runs, forcing you into passing downs. But Tech is weakest in the pass rush, meaning that if we do get in a lot of third and longs, Casey is less likely to get pressure, so he becomes more likely to complete the pass. The key for the offense is being nasty and getting serious push on run plays while not getting confused by Tech's linebackers blitzing in the pass game. I'm excited to see what a reimagined defensive Texas Tech will look like. Tech gives us good games, and I'm hoping for another one this Saturday. Thanks for hanging out. Watch more of my videos here, and consider joining as a channel member. As always, welcome.